pray to God, my heart, soul, and body, every single day of my life with every breath, I solemnly promise to try to live my life for you, oh Allah, you did revive my soul and show me light into my heart, so please leave is now my only goal oh, I love you so I love you so Now I know how it's like To have your precious love in my life Now I know how it feels To finally be at peace inside I wish that everybody Set me free and make me strong Oh Allah, I'm forever grateful to you Whatever I say could never be enough You gave me strength to overcome my uncertainties And stand firm against all It's not that big, it's not that big of a deal, I'm leaving Now how does this apply to this life? The Prophet ﷺ is advising us to have that mindset in this life. That I'm only in this place for a short time and then I'm leaving. Just like you don't get attached to your hotel bed and your hotel chair and you don't start spending lots of money furnishing it, we should have that same mindset in this life. It does not mean that we can't have nice things. It does not mean that you own and letting those things own you. So when we have things of dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He covers us with gifts. We all are drowning in gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us money, He gives us health, He gives us, he gives us status, He gives us beauty, He gives us youth. He gives us our families, our children, our spouses. But the problem is that when Allah gives us a gift, we should appreciate those gifts. And we should show gratitude for those gifts. But here's where the problem comes along. When we start to love the gift more than we love the giver. When we start to love the gift, more than we love the giver. When we Does he try to find like a, like a sharp object to try to get him out of the belly of the whale? He doesn't. He says, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al He says such a powerful dua, such a powerful statement. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when we are in a similar situation, we should also say that dua. La ilaha illa ant, there is nothing worthy of worship but you. He is being redirected. He is acknowledging the tawheed of Allah. That his situation has nothing to do with anything else. His difficulty has nothing to do with anything else. His difficulty, his situation is to direct him to the oneness of Allah. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Allah is high above everything else. All the other false sense of security, all the other false senses of security that we depend on and we turn to. Indeed, I was among the wrongdoers. Again, humility. Acknowledging his own desperate need for Allah. That is the response in hardship. That is how we respond. And it is because of that dua, and Allah tells us something very interesting in the Quran. He says that had he not 
done that, had he not had this response, he would have stayed in there until the end of time. And you know, Allah doesn't ever tell us anything without a purpose. What can we learn from that? We will not get out of our situation. Our external situation will not change until we change what's inside ourselves. Until we realize that it's about Allah, that it's about turning back to Allah, that it's about acknowledging la ilaha illa ant in your life. And because he did that, Allah saved him from his situation. Allah freed him. When we look at the example of Musa alayhi salam, even while Musa before